Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. This is another Windows Server 2008 training video. Now, if you enjoy this training video, please stop by my website, jackstechcorner.com. All one word, jackstechcorner.com. Look in the little show notes here where it says more, and you'll find a link to it. Go there, and you can purchase a DVD with some great videos that will show you how to install Windows Server 2008 all the way to becoming a systems administrator with your Windows Server. That's including Active Directory and all the other great bells and whistles to go with that. Or look at the website on the last link on the toolbar for my online class. A lot of people are signing up for the Windows Server 2008 online class where the video is there. You also can take uh, quiz questions to make sure that you're retaining the information and at the end I will issue you a certificate of completion for the Windows Server 2008 installation and administration. So it's just some great ways that you can uh, help yourself out a little bit with some continuing education and it's my way of uh, having it relatively inexpensive. There's some great deals right now on the DVD and on the online class. I want to make it inexpensive so everybody can take the classes and learn. So what are we going to learn today about Windows Server 2008? Well, today I thought I would teach you about, you know, we get a lot of calls all the time about uh, needing icons on desktops. So this is a policy-based uh, lesson. And what I'm going to show you with this is how to push out a icon for all your users' desktops without having to touch computers. I mean, let's face it, we have 700 computers in our network. So with 700 machines and two guys, it would take us quite a long time to get those icons pushed out there to everybody. So let's go ahead and uh, get started here. I have Windows Server 2008 uh, already booted up. I'm logged in as the administrator. Let's go ahead and go to, into this policy, and I'll show you how to create the shortcut. So what we would do is simply click on the Start button. Go to your administrative tools and then go to group policy management, group policy management or GPM. Once we're in our GPM, group policy management, which is a snap in basically, and you've heard of snap ins before, and then we're working with the finance GPO or group policy object, just like Active Directory we now deal with group policy objects. I'm working in my finance department and on the DVD you'll see how we created uh, this actually GPO. Uh, it's on the DVD and it's on the online class so there's another good reason maybe to take if you don't understand these items. But if you know so you're under finance here and if you understand Active Directory you would pretty much understand uh, the way the objects work in the group policy also. We're going to right click on the finance and go to edit. So what we're affecting right now uh, actually is anybody in that finance department that we give that policy to. Any computers or any people that we apply that finance policy to, that's the computers that we are affecting. Now, speaking about that, there's two ways we can really look at this. One is you can either go to computer configuration which means you can push this desktop icon out to every computer no matter who logs in or we can do it based on the user configuration so as the users log in it gets put to each desktop now what we tend to like to do in our organization what works for us the most is to go into computer configuration and if I go into preferences and then Windows settings I'll go to shortcut. So what this is going to tell me is we are going to place a new shortcut in the all users folder anyway. So let's do it based on the computer itself. Then every time that somebody would delete an icon, which if you work in a school, you know that's quite possible. If they would delete an icon, one would be replaced back onto their desktop again. You don't have to continuously go out there and replace those. So just right click in here and go new shortcut. Once we're in here, there's a couple different actions we can take. We can either update. So if you have a website that maybe changed the URL, you can go in and you can do an update. We can do a create. That's what we're going to do actually today in this lesson. You can replace the icon. So say if you have an icon called Google, 
but Google moved. And you could actually take that and change the URL if you would like. Update is what I was just talking about. You could update the icon or delete it altogether. So if the icon is no longer used, which happens a lot of times if you buy uh, online applications, you're using it for a while and all of a sudden you don't like it. So we can just click at all the computers that will actually delete the icon off of them. So we're going to go to create because we want to create a new icon. Now the target type right here, you have a shell object, a file system object, or a URL. We want a URL. Let's give it a name. Matter of fact, we're going to go ahead and install Google on all the desktops. So Google. Now we're going to give it a full, you can give it a full path. This is the location where you're putting it. Specify a full path so we can tell it exactly where we want to put it. But you know what I told you earlier, we're going to go to all users desktops. And you can see here, you can read through these and put it anywhere you wish to put it. We want to do all users desktops. Because that way I'm certain that everybody gets it that logs into that computer. They're just going to, it's going to populate that and show up there. Then just put your URL in here. Just like you would type it. HTTP, you got to type the whole thing out. www.google.com Now we're just going to simply click apply. And it says, please enter a value for name. So we can see here at the name, it changed that again when I changed it down here to URL. It took that back out. So just put your Google back in there and cl click apply. And then click OK. You can see here order number is one. The action, it's going to create it. And it's going to tell you where it's going to create it here common desktop directory slash and then Google will be the folder will be the shortcut and then that's the target where it's going to actually go so and you can put as many shortcuts in there as you want and you know it just makes it really really easy if you're using web-based mail like we do uh, we use Google Apps at this point in our organization I like to put it in their email and just pot throw it out there on everybody's desktops so and I don't have to tell them every day where the email address is it makes it really really simple and clean so I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on how to push out desktop shortcuts to your users' computers with never leaving your Windows Server 2008 uh, environment. You can sit there at your office, uh, remote in, even if they're virtual servers, you know, do a remote desktop session, create your icons on the fly as people are logging in for their actual computers. Once again, don't forget that website, jackstechcorner.com. Uh, if you're interested, look at the DVDs. It's very inexpensive. There's a ton of videos on there to get you started and get you administrating with Active Directory and everything else that you need to know to run a Windows server. Or, like I said, if you'd like to take the online class and have even more uh, contact and dialogue with me, that's absolutely fine also. Um, just look at that last page of my website, Online Classes, and sign up today. And uh, I'm sure before you know it, you'll be holding on to that uh, certificate of completion. So thank you very much for watching my Windows Server 2008 video. I hope it uh, taught you something new that maybe you didn't know how to do. And I hope you come back here for more. Please email and comment. Uh, I love seeing the comments on my uh, YouTube videos. And I'll see you back here next time on Jack's Tech Corner for another Windows Server 2008 training video. So long for now.